What's up YouTube, Dale here from Zephyr, and today I am bringing you an update to Ninjas. So what I've tried to do with this particular update of the build is give it a balanced look and a balanced feel. And what I mean by that is it has the ability to go first or second. It'll give you that ability to either OTK, but also set up a defensive line, or if you're interacted beyond belief, you have a way to be able to play out the entire turn, defend yourself, and then swing back in for the OTK, which we'll see in the two card combo at the end of the video as well. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. We're going to be diving headfirst in, starting off with our main monsters being Ninja Grandmaster Hanzo. So this one has two when effects. When it is normal summoned, you get to add a ninjutsu art card from the deck to the hand, so that's your defensive route with the card. And then when this card is flipped or special summoned, you get to add a ninja monster from the deck to the hand, except itself, which can become your aggressor because that will give you direct access to Mitsu the Insect Ninja. So if you control a ninja card or a face down defense monster, you get to special summon this card from the hand. And the defensive option of this card is when your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, target a face down defense monster you control, change it to face up defense position. And if you do change this card to face down defense position, then if the target monster was a ninja monster, except Mitsu, you get to negate that opponent's activated effect. You can only use each effect once per turn. And then we are playing free Tobari the Sky Ninja. So this card cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect the turn it was special summoned or flipped face up. And you can only use each of the following effects once per turn. You get to send this card from the hand to the graveyard to special summon a ninja monster from your hand in face up or face down defense. And then during your opponent's main phase or battle phase, you get a quick effect to fusion summon a ninja monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. So great and easy access to get you into your cards like Mizen. Then we're playing a couple of one-offs. You've got the one Baku, the one Kigero, and the one Green Ninja, followed up by your aggressors in the form of the one Geo and the one Twilight Ninja. Now, it really is up to you on this particular ratio and when you want to play them. I know some people play two Baku, some people play two Green Ninja, some people play two Geo. I personally feel that in this particular version of the deck, because you are going a little bit more aggressive, this is more than enough. So when you've got to look at it this way, is Geo is your interactive card. This is one you ideally want to be dropping on your opponent's turn because if it is normal or special or even flip face up, you target up to two face up monsters on the field and you change them to face down defense position. And if you do, any monster or monsters that were flipped by this effect cannot change their battle position. So it's a nice little lock that flips them face down and really does stun your opponent. On the flip side of that, if you wanted to just go all out aggression, your Twilight Ninja get, uh, get Tetsu, um, the Shogun, gives you the ability to tribute some of this card by tributing one ninja monster. And if it attacks, if it is in tap position, you get to target two ninja monsters in your graveyard, except itself, the Shogun, and change this card to defense. And if you do, special on those two monsters back. Now, obviously, this will give you the ability to bring back more resource to the board, which can help you climb even further. It can bring you back to Bari, which can then use the Twilight Ninja in order to fuse, as long as it has um, two different attributes, because your Mizen needs two monsters with different types. So obviously, you need to keep in mind you've got Warriors Beast, you've got Rocks, um, you've got Winged Beast with the Tabari, you've got Inset with your Mitsu. So you do need to make sure that you are using the correct materials. So ones are more than enough, in my opinion. It Sometimes some people might want to consider a second Geo instead of the Twilight Ninja, but I feel that you go for a one and -on one And what I like about this is if I'm going first, I'm aiming for this one. If I'm going second, I can sometimes aim for this one, depending on what ninjas I've got in the graveyard. But this one's obviously going to be more ideal for the grind game as well. Then moving on to the spells, I've gone with two Ninjutsu Art Notebook of Mastery. Um, now... I get that people want to play three of this, and I've kind of gone back and forth with it, whether I want to play it two, whether I wanted to play it three. Because I'm not playing something like the Silent Wobby, so I'm not giving my opponent a monster turn zero, um, it's definitely a card that is more focused on going second. It's one of the ones that if I do decide to search it out, if I do hard open it and I'm going first, I'm only going to be able to set it and then use it during my opponent's turn. So it's one of the ones that I felt that the reliance on it was a lot less. Now, I haven't gone all out aggression that every single time I'm going to choose to go second with this deck, but what it gives me that ability of is if I do run up to that random tempo I play at locals now and they go, right, you're going first, the deck can still perform. It won't clog on loads of go second cards because all of the cards that I've chosen that are good for going second are also quite useful for going first as well, bar the Ninjutsu Art Notebook, which is why this has been cut down to two rather than maxing it out at three. 
We've then got the one hidden village of the ninjutsu arts. So just for clarity, if you don't know what these cards do, the notebook gives you the ability that if your opponent controls a card, you get to set up to one ninja monster and up to one ninjutsu art spell or try to accept itself from the deck um, and or graveyard. But only one can come from each location. So you need to have one in the graveyard first, be able to resolve the second effect. And if this set card on the field is sent to the graveyard, you get to target one face up monster on the field and change it to face down defense position. So obviously that can work out really nicely with Forbidden Droplet. The Hidden Village is if a ninja monster is summoned to your field, you get to target a ninja monster or an ninjutsu art card in your graveyard and add it back to your hand. But you cannot activate cards or effects of the cards with a name for the rest of the turn. If a ninja monster or monsters or an ninjutsu art card or card, you control would be destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect. You get to banish a ninja from the hand, uh, sorry, from the graveyard instead, but you can only use each effect once per turn. So again, it only needs to be at one. It can be searched out throughout the deck with stuff like your Hanzo. Um, and that's also why we're only playing the one digger, the one duplication, and the one dancing leaves. Now, I know in other builds you can play two Dancing Leaves. I feel that that is in a build where you are more comfortable going first, so you can definitely bump that up to two if you wish. But again, like I said with this deck, it's the balance of being able to go first and second without clogging. Like If I'm going second, I'm going to be pushing for the OTK. I don't really want to be relying on these cards. If I'm going first, I want to rely on these cards more than I do with these cards. So that's why it's so good that all of these are very easily searchable. Then for the generic cards that we're playing, and again, all the generic cards I've tried to make sure are good going first and second. So we're going with two Book of Moon with two Book of Eclipse. If you want to, you can go for three on one and none of the other. It really is up to you. I quite like the ability that Book of Moon allows me to dodge certain target effects um, as well as interact with my opponent. And then Book of Eclipse also helps me dodge certain targeted effects while also being able to flip my opponent's entire board, which can cause them quite a few issues. Uh, one instant fusion because obviously you have a great target in the form of the Yagamaru. Followed up by one Reinforced with the Army, one Called by the Grave. And then these next cards I'm going to show you can very easily be subbed out for either alternative board breaking cards or of course hand traps. But like I said, these particular cards here give me that ability of going first and second with a nice balance. So we've gone with Triple Super Poly because we did get a brand new card in the Battles of Legend in the form of the Ace Spades Speculation. And I'll talk about this when we get to it in the extra deck as well as just other generic um, monsters that you can utilize Super Poly with. Two talents, this is probably the card that has the least effect of going first and second, because obviously going first, you need them to hand trap you. But the idea is if they attempt to try and ash or, in, um, not imperm, but ash or Vela your Hanzo, you can retaliate by going, right, okay, I'll look at your hand, I know what you can't play through, I'll get rid of that card and then move on from there. Uh, free Forbidden Droplet, probably like the best board breaking card for this particular deck. And the idea is if I go first, I can set these cards. If I'm going second, I can activate these cards, break down the negated board and then build on from there. Same with Imperm, that is like your balanced hand trap, and then double Nibiru. You can go for free Nibiru if you want to, but again, the idea is that I'm not always guaranteed to go first, and I'm not always guaranteed to go second, but it is one of the ones that if my opponent makes me go second, and I go, okay, cool, I've hard opened a nib, I'm in a very good position. Now, of course, you're probably going to be going second a lot more when we do get into the new format, because of, of course, the new... Um, Mold Chummy card, so that's something to definitely be aware of, that right now you might have a better option of being able to go first, because the only time you're ever going to be forced to go, um, the only time you're ever going to be forced to go first will be with Tenpai, whereas like I said, when we get into the new format, a lot of people are considering going blind second, just because we now have less generic negates around without access to Appalooza and everything else, so that going second might be a bit more uh, of an option for you, uh, sorry, a bit more of a disadvantage for you, and then that's when you might want to be going first as well. So you've got the ability to flip-flop between first and second. Uh, moving into the extra deck, of course, we are playing Triple Mizen. So the one big thing that this deck did lose was Pot of Prosperity. I did look at other cards that you could play. Like, you don't really want to play Desires because you play quite a few one-offs, and you don't really want to play extra because you still want to be able to utilize your Mizens and your Yagamarus. You can't really afford for them to go, and then there's not really other cards in the extra deck you want to be playing Freeze of you want to be selecting them at one. So Mizen is your ideal card. So it must first be either uh, fusion summoned or special from the extra deck by tributing the above card you control. Your ninja monsters can attack directly while you control a face down fence ninja monster. And then your opponent's monsters cannot uh, target this card for attacks. And then when your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, special summon a ninja monster from the deck in face out or face down defense edition. And you can only use each effect once per turn. Now the best thing about something like Mizen is it does work incredibly well with Silent Wobby. And for those of you that are like, what the hell is Silent Wobby and how does it work? Well, the idea is, this is Silent Wobby. So you give this to your opponent. So during your main phase, you get to special summon this card from the hand to your opponent's side of the field. When summoned this way, draw one card. Now, because you give it to your opponent, it's them that's going to be. Uh, there you go. Because you give it to your opponent, it's them that's going to be drawing the card. 
Um, it does give you 2,000 life points and it does limit their hand size to three, but that won't come into effect until the end of their turn. But the idea is that when you give them Silent Wobby, if you've already got a Mizen on the board, the Silent Wobby triggers, which will then trigger the Mizen, which then gives you that extra ninja from the board. Um, it was obviously great in the Cash Tira format because you gave them a monster that they couldn't do anything with, uh, which is why it's not in the main deck. It's definitely something to consider for the side deck because it also means that if you give them Silent Wobby, they can't imperm you from that point on, they can't even you from that point on, and they definitely can't Lightning Storm you. So you're kind of playing around a couple of board breakers in that sense. Then of course we've got Triple Yagamaru. So this one requires two uh, ninja monsters with different types and it must either be fusioned or specialed from your extra deck by treating the above cards. And if it is specialed or flip face up, you get to punish one other ninja or ninjutsu art card from your hand, graveyard or face up on the field. Uh, then target a card on the field and banish it. So, so you have great success on this one, and this is probably like one of your ideal uh, go first routes. So your Mizen is obviously ideal for going second, and then your Yagamaru is ideal for going first. Then for the one-offs, we only play one, um, one of each of these. So these are just your super poly targets in the form of Mud Dragon, Garura, and of course the Ace Spades Speculation. So this requires one monster with 2,500 or more attack and a face down defense monster with 2,500 or less defense. Now keep in mind, you cannot super poly your opponent's face down monster because you cannot identify what it is. Um, it's quite the same that you can't super poly with one of your opponent's face down monsters if it's like two dark monsters on the board or a U-Bell or anything like that because you can't publicly identify what that card is. Even if you already know what it is and it's been flipped face down, you just can't do it. It's part of the game mechanics. The other is if you have a face down monster, as soon as they put a monster on the board with 2,500 or more attack, you get rid of their boss monster. You can only special summon this card once per turn, and you can tribute summon, uh, sorry, tribute one attack monster on the field and face down defense system. Sorry, one attack position monster and one face, uh, face down defense position monster to special summon this card back from the graveyard. It gains the following effects based on its battle position. If it's an attack, it gains attack equal to the highest original attack among monsters your opponent controls, your choice if tied. And if it's in defense, it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect. So obviously it can become an insanely powerful boss monster. It's just a really nice super poly target for this deck because you could technically just set a card and then super poly their big boss monster as soon as they put it down. Uh, the only XYZ you play is the Blade Armor Ninja. Like, you don't need to worry about this. It's kind of one of them flex spots. So the flex spot that you could consider taking this out for would be a second Grandmaster Saizo. But like I said, I've gone with the balance. I'm not looking to go into the grind game with this deck. The furthest I want to go with this, in a, uh, this deck in grind would be um, my first turn, stop their turn, back to my turn, OTK. That's kind of what you're ideally aiming to do. If you want to go into more of a uh, grind game, you'll probably play a second Saizo. But I'm risking it with just the one. Especially when we don't have Appaloosa, you kind of want to be a little bit faster in the game. Uh, one cross sheep, incredibly good on this one because obviously you've got your Mizens and your Agamarus, which will then be able to bring back stuff like your um, your Hanzos and Mitsus and Tabaris and everything else in between. Then of course, for the go second option, we've got the Moon of the Close Heavens followed up by the Underworld Goddess. I feel that so many people, as soon as they see this card, are expecting the Fiendsworth Engine to then kick in, that you go, okay, cool, effect, and they're like, oh crap, they're playing this, and you go, yeah, I haven't prepared for this, and you go, cool, link two, uh, link one, link two, link three, link four, one of my ones, link five, and then go into this using two of their monsters. And the last one you go with is the Borosaur, because this is part of the OTK. The idea is, as you're trying to figure out the OTK, which we'll see in the combo very shortly, is that when you equip the Iron Digger to your Borosword, Borosword becomes a ninja, and then as long as you've got Mizen on the board, Borosword can attack directly. So you attack with Mizen, switch it to defense, attack with Borosword, attack with Borosword, game. So that's everything you need. So that's it for the entire video, the entire, pro well, the entire profile first. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the two card combo, which is going to use two of the nicest cards in this entire deck, being your Hanzo and, of course, your Insect Ninja. So I'm going to zoom out, come back to the board, and show you exactly what we've got. The two card OTK combo involves Hanzo and of course Mitsu. Now our opponent will control a monster. This is how you're gonna be able to complete the OTK. So we're gonna signify that by the Neos dice. And then keep in mind, as you are going second, you're still gonna have four more cards in the hand. Any of those could be hand traps that would have hit your opponent with like stuff like Nibiru, or of course you have stuff like Forbidden Droplet. So we're gonna start off by normal summoning down the Hanzo. The Hanzo is gonna grab you your Ninjutsu Art Notebook. You'll then be able to special on down Mitsu because you control a ninja and you're going to link both of these off to get you into your cross sheep. You'll now be able to activate the notebook as you have a ninja in the graveyard, which will allow you to bring back the Hanzo face down and then set from the deck your ninjutsu art tool Iron Digger. Now, as Iron Digger is an equip spell, it can be activated the turn it's set. So you're going to activate that, equipping it to your cross sheep, making cross sheep a ninja. You'll then be able to use the Ninjutsu Art Iron Digger's effect to banish the Mitsu from the graveyard to target a card on the field and destroy it. And the card you want to destroy is your own Iron Digger. Because if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you get to target one of your banished ninja monsters and special summon it or add it back to the hand in face down defense position. So you get to bring back your Mitsu. 
Now, keep in mind that ninjas or the fusing, fuse mechanic can be done using face down monsters. So you're going to fuse both of these ninjas that are water, dark, warrior and insect. So they meet the requirements of being two monsters with different types to get you into your Mizen. This will then of course trigger the cross sheep ability and by triggering the cross sheep ability you'll be able to special summon back your Hanzo. Hanzo's effect will now of course trigger as it was special summoned and it will allow you to add the Baku. Because Baku is added to your hand except by drawing it you get to special summon it and if it is specialed or flipped you get to target a ninja or a ninjutsu art card from your graveyard or face up spend trap zone and add it back to the hand. So we're going to special down the Baku and this will allow us to add back the iron digger. Now what you're going to do is use Cross Sheep as a Link 1-2, plus your Hanzo, plus your Baku, so you work your way up into a Link 4 to get you into your Boral Sword Dragon. You will now activate Ninjutsu Art Tool Iron Digger to equip to your Boral Sword Dragon. And this now makes Boral Sword a ninja. Now this is even before your opponents even attempted to activate an effect which will then allow you to trigger the Mizen. But the idea is that this is now a ninja, it can now attack directly. So my opponent doesn't need to control a monster. It does for the thing. So Boral Sword can now attack directly. So you're going to attack directly for 3,000 there. You'll be able to attack directly with Mizen for 2,500. Use Boral Sword's effect to shift the Mizen to defense. And then it gets to attack again for that 3k, finishing off the OTK with this deck. So that's pretty much it for the ninja profile. I hope this combo has given you a bit of an idea. Now, obviously, this isn't the only route that you can go with this deck. There are other routes. That's why you're also playing so many other cards, stuff like your Forbidden Droplets, your Nibiru's, everything else in between to help you complete an OTK or kind of slow your opponent down by being able to utilize stuff like your Hanzo, working your way into duplication, which then works you into more fusion monsters as well. So that's it for the ninja profile. If you do have any questions, by all means, please put them in the comments down below. I will be more than happy to answer them. But for now, as absolutely always, stay safe. And of course, happy dueling.